Hey everybody, thanks for being here at this time, almost 6, 6 p.m. I know everybody wanted to party, thank you. My name is Sibel. Uh, I know it's not so common here, Sibel. I work with cyber threat intelligence in Brazil. Uh, well, I'll talk about, blah, talk about this later. Uh, of course, my first language is not English, it's Portuguese. So if I say something weird, please let me know because this way I can learn. Uh, well, let, let's introduce him. Thanks. Well, my name is Mauro. I work in cyber threat intelligence as well, but in Uruguay for, uh, for different companies. So I'm glad that you are here today. Thanks for taking the time to attend this talk and I hope you really enjoyed it. And if you want to make a lot of money in ransomware, this is not the place. So if you want to get up and leave it, that's totally, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. We can talk about this later, after this, you know. But you can DM me on yeah. talks. Yeah, it's recording right now, it's better not. Okay. So, uh, again, what's me? Again. So, the name of our talk is ransomware B-side. What the hell is going on here? Uh, no, here, the things. Uh, because besides, so we remember what? Music, disc. So uh, in every slide, there is a different uh, name of songs. Mostly I like, so for this. And uh, well, uh, we'll talk about some handsomewares that's not the biggest one like Babook or uh, Lockbeat or others. We wanna talk about um, this not so famous, you know, uh, like that. Uh, never got there. Some look like a handsomer, act like a handsomer, but it's not exactly handsomer. And others has a uh, very cool names for this. This one we choose. What else? Very okay. Okay. Hackers with tech problems happens all the time. Sorry. Okay. So, as I say, my name is Sibel. I'm from Brazil. Uh, I explain what I do for people. Oh, I work with cyber threat intelligence. What is this? It's like a gossip girl of Mauerland. I have to see uh, a lot of disgraces, what is going on, and tell to my boss, okay, this is happening, and now I have to do this, this, and that. Basically, it's this, uh, what I do. And now, hey. Well, my name is Mauro. I'm not well known for my job in the ransomware scene, like interviewing groups and the like. I'm mostly known for researching North Koreans' APT groups. I actually once stole a sample from a North Korean campaign, and I, it was named after my first submission. And I actually started working more on that part of threat intelligence. But I'm from Argentina, I work in Uruguay, and I'm currently leading the Bitso Quetzal team which is the first Latin American threat research team focused on web threat threats. Trainers, organized cybercrime, APTs targeted in crypto space, and so on. Okay. Um, oh. I love cats. For this, there's a lot of cats. Uh, that's the explanation behind the cats. Also, um, the mainstream ransomware strains that you would see named here, if Tetch wants to cooperate, uh, are not exactly what we are going to talk here. I want to make a difference between r organized ransomware, ransomware groups, ransomware as a service, commodity ransomware, or in simpler terms, uh, ransomware for rent, and even not ransomware, data extortion, another kind of uh, data theft. Actually, you will see these names, they will probably ring a bell in your mind, Logbit, we ended up with Operation Kronos and certain skirmish against law enforcement agencies, Black Cat, who just picked up the bags and ran away with a lot of money from affiliates, Rebel, Conti, Networker, Eastern European legends, actually, Babook and Rook, actually something that worked pretty well at first on the ransomware scene, but had certain failures that prevented them from decrypting victims that pay the ransom. So that basically was the end of it. And after that, uh, source code for a builder of, of Babook was leaked, and lots of groups started building ransomware atop of Babook, which was actually flawed, and wasn't able to decrypt victim files, creating a new strain of different ransomware bands that were not actually up to the game to decrypt well, uh, whoever victim paid for the ransomware. And we have other ones like Hive, which just uh, was disbanded a few months ago, 
and by society, which is still on the large. But this is not about them, but about other groups that actually didn't make to the headlines. So the first one, of course, I love is Hello Kitty because I love cats. So, oh my God, this is not cooperating. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Come on. Uh, cables. Okay. So, what happened with Hello Kitty? Uh, they are no because they hacked this company and leaked the cyberpunk, uh, cyberpunk and Witcher 3 uh, a few years ago. So, it was a big scandal at that time because, oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, oh my gosh, what happened? You know, this supposed to get a lot of money with these games. I don't, I don't play games, so for me it's whatever, something, just something else. And say, okay, we want your money because uh, really the cable is not cooperating. Uh, and this handsome note said, okay, it's a big pawn. So I want your money, or of course we release this uh, or sell for your um, for the other companies and things like this. So I need your money. Pay me now, okay? Mm, you have to wait 44, uh, 48 hours to pay me. And they say, mm. so what happened is they try to sell me XSS is a Russian forum. Say, okay, I'm selling this uh, CD Project Red. Uh, I don't want so much money. That's it. Who wants? Please let me know. But the thing is, uh, uh, the competitors, uh, uh, companies don't want to buy because it would be illegal for them to release this. So they, no, 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 I don't want to buy. It can be a big, messy, because there's very famous games, I guess. Who plays this and let me know. So mm, not so sure about this. And then the guy say, okay, now I got an offer. So it's, uh, we, I sell, I'm sat satisfied with this and this condition. They will not distribute our round. So, okay, no one needs you now uh, to get, uh, uh, okay, it's working? Okay, okay. So, they saw, so. But, uh, what happened later is FBI accidentally revealed that Hello Kit Hanswar gangs operated with this. And, wow, what's going on now? They, okay, yeah, this is hard here. The cable is not cooperating. This is all Logbit's fault. Yes. Yep. Um, so FBI found while it, they are investigation, during investigation, they found this handsomeware and of course, is zip it. All the handsomeware, uh, the handsomeware is zip it. So they say, okay, if it, uh, FBI found this, let's release everything, the, the games, some Cisco, they leak it. And of course, they, the core, uh, the core code, you know, of the handsomeware, I mean, so it's everywhere, so people could copy and use, reuse, like an open source, basically, for everyone. And then they thought, hmm, who is Gookie? Now, the guy who supposedly, you know, uh, was the big boss of this handsomeware was one of the nicknames was Gookie, and say, okay, I don't want this anymore, so I will rebrand myself and be now Gookie. Hello, Gookie. And because these games, um, they uh, was found recently, I guess, in the beginning of this year, they release everything and compile the games for everybody to play. So the guy say, okay, it's here. This is the password because um, these files was um, locked with passwords. Is a, is that sucks because of course the company when they develop this game. They lock it with passwords, so now they have the, all the passwords, everything, and it's released. 
And of course, the guys from UX, uh, VX Underground say, okay, nerds, go ahead, you can play now. Someone compiled the game, so you can play that for free. But then uh, he rebranded this Hello Kit for Gookie. And now, okay, I'm looking for someone to, you know, to operate with me, but calling, you know. You must be uh, ability with people, uh, speak English, because uh, we're going to do some kind of, you know, you call for people, ask for money, and you must work, do some OSINT as well. You have to be very good in OPSEC. So we need this. So if you don't have a job, we can always look in for in these forums because as have uh, work for everyone. It's easy, pay well, sometimes they pay with some, you know, part of a uh, percentage. So it is, is good. Okay, now another hand somewhere. Uh, Cuba, well, some uh, very specific of this handsomeware, they have just one file without add, add, add additional libraries. Uh, their samples with, that was found, the time step, uh, they always change the time steps. So what is 2020, but now it's 1992, what the hell? This is very good, actually. I think it's very smart because if the time, they change the time stamp, it's, hmm, it's hard to make like a, uh, reverse engineer, you know, to find something. But uh, this encryption is good as well because it's hybrid in encryption. So it's hard, uh, kind of hard, you know, to break this. So this is the main, uh, the main different things they have, the Cuba hand somewhere, but there is more. So of course there are Castro and Che Guevara. They are from Argentina, this is weird people. Uh, sorry, Argentinians, and but when they leak, uh, they leak the. Uh, oh, sometimes I forget. I have to translate in my mind from Portuguese to English, or sometimes to Spanish. They leak the files. Uh, if the company don't pay, okay, this is for free. You can use as you want. Very beautiful here, as you see, very uh, artistic. You know, like uh, painting like this. I think it's beautiful. But they also have uh, paid content. Uh, you can pay for this, not anymore. We try to find this online and, and it our website, but we couldn't. But then what they did, okay, we are tired of this name. So now we are via is Vendetta, they, we brand. But uh, the modus operandi is the same. But what we found, the first name of Cuba was CodeDraw. But then they rebrand for Tropical Scorpius. Not happy with this, now they are Fidel, and then Cuba, and now V is for Vendetta, but not, mm, they don't exist anymore. Maybe they rebrand, we don't know which name they are using. So, but they use the Hong Kong backdoor. And all the, um, the information is sell on industrial spy marketplace that don't exist anymore. But this uh, industrial marketplace starts to, oh, okay, I want some money as well, so why not we go to the handsomeware too? Uh, we are attack, uh, using handsomeware. But uh, they still use um, the Cuba uh, malware and the Cuba handsome notes. And then the industrial spy now officially is a handsomeware group. They are threat actors. And then they rebrand for the new one for, and they name it underground. But Hong Kong, Hong Kong backdoor uh, became a threat actor too. And then they, you, and they use this Hong Kong backdoor and is using as well uh, underground. Uh, threat actor. I mean, everything is connected. We can do this like forever. Uh, I think all the threat actors are connected. We can find this really, really easy because uh, the same modus operandi, the, the code is similar, how they encrypt us are similar, so kind of. And as you see, every slide there is a different name of music that is connected to with the name of Hansomware. This is a I don't know what the band is from, but it's in Spanish and talk about Havana. So now it's you talk about Hitler. Okay. Yeah, this is the name Hitler is. Well. Yeah, we now go to the darkest part of ransomware. And even it's like bordering with not ransomware at all. There was a ransomware now named after the infamous dictator Hitler. 
And it actually was a pretty weird a part of the malware history and of the real history as well. But Hitler ransomware was Germany based, it contained uh, strings in German, but actually the infection chain was pretty, pretty raw, pretty uh, dull. It was a bad file with then executed a BBS script, then ran an, ex an executable file, and then another executable file. Absolutely messy, noisy, and easy to catch. But here's the point. This ransomware asks for payment, not in crypto, but in both phone phone cards. And there's a specific strain that asks for another type of phone card as well. The point is that it does not encrypt anything. It actually renames your files. It tries to take down the extensions, so you end up with a file not being associated to anything to be opened with, even the executable files. Then, displays a fake window saying something like, I can't find the file, and you're wondering like, what the hell? Where, where does this windows come from? And that's when the behind the scenes, the script runs and changes your extensions. It just messes up with your extensions, places, a, I think, a 24-hour countdown, and then asks for the Vodafone code in order to restore everything. If not, it acts just as a simple doll wiper. Actually, uh, these wonderful people have three versions. Run Sonwar with N, misspelled, which is the first one. Hitler 2, which is actually called Kane XPIA. And the third one, the final one, which is wonderfully called Final Solution. So uh, this is despicable from every single point of view. Here you can see the infection chain. You have the actor, a bad file with a random name, the BBS, which will send the fake alert error, the Ramson node, which is actually an executable file, and you can see traces of Visual Basic everywhere, like super basic. And then the wiper, which masquerades itself as Firefox. Here you can see the complex engineering behind the ransomware. It's just a bad file renaming other files. And then if you don't pay, it will just wipe everything. That's it. Now we're going to move to another type of ransomware. Uh, you may remember that at the first minutes of this talk, I wanted to make a difference between RAS, ransomware as a service, or consolidated ransomware groups, organized cybercrime ransomware groups, and commodity ransomware. Commodity or take at ransomware is a kind of ransomware that you rent. You just buy a version, you rent a builder for an, a specific amount of time to be used. You're just part of a scheme, but not as an affiliate. You're just a client. You have the rights to download the software, to make certain modifications, and to even to receive updates and even professional support 24-7. So you're basically buying a product, a malware product. The difference in, the, in this scene is that you will have a lot of offers from different developers and builders. Some are better than others, some are just trash. But we will start with some of the cases that make it, almost made it to the history, like Hermes. As you can see, this is a little bit more elaborated than the last one we saw, an HTML uh, ransom node asking for crypto. It's a little bit more developed. But actually, Hermes was sold on forums publicly. It uses just plain RSA encryption and encrypts everything with HRM extension. The infection chain is super simple. Optionally, you will have a macro-enabled document, and where do you find this kind of documents? In phishing. Then it will download an executable file, which will encrypt everything and drop the ransom note. Pretty simple so far. But then, Hermes was first associated with Lazarus Group at first, and it was seen in a Taiwanese bank attack, which was pretty successful some years ago. But then it was found that Hermes was being on sale for a long time on forums. So it may be that just Lazarus had a hold of a sample, bought a sample, stole a sample, or actually it's not, it, it's hard to believe that they had put it up for sale. And it was labeled as a Ryuk predecessor. This is interesting here. You can see certain um, similarities between the two made by Checkpoint Labs, but there are two main differences here, not on the code, on the operation. You can find Hermes 
if you backtrack into history to 2017 uh, and, and around, you will find a lot of uh, victims of Hermes. Big business, small business, simple mom and pop shops that should not fear ransomware at all. And then if you go to Rio, you will find only high profile targets or mostly high profile targets. Why? Because of the difference on the operation model. On the left, you can see how a RAS program works. Some details more, some details less. It's not, this is not a Bible, this is not holy word, so some things can change. Basically, when you join a RAS program, you will have uh, a support team, a dedicated leak site, dedicated developers for the project, dedicated cryptographers, whatever you want. It depends on the size of the project. Then you will have a victim. You will have your own builder to build your own ransomware strain, which is tagged. What means to be tagged? That if it leaks somehow, they will know it can be tied back to that, that affiliate in particular. This is used mostly for security, for OPSEC reasons. Let's say that you are part of a Rust program and you encrypt someone. Then you ask for a payment. You will have a unique crypto address, be it Bitcoin, Monero, whatever you want. You receive the payment, the victim pays, to the, but it doesn't pay to the affiliate. That account is not under the control of the affiliate, but under the RAS administrator program control. Once the, once the money is received, a share will be sent to the affiliate. This is how an organized group works. Now, do you remember what happened with Black Cat? They just pocketed 20 million, 20 grand from a victim and ran away. And the affiliate said, they just scammed me. The affiliate said that because the affiliate didn't have the money at any point of the process. It was meant to receive the money at the end of the transaction. It was the last person on the chain and didn't receive it a single time. That's how Black Cat set up their exit scam. Then you have what we call, uh, let's say a commodity ransomware, take out for rent ransomware. You have a ransomware developer that can sell you their source code, can, can sell you a builder that can rent you uh, the product for a specific amount of time. And then you are in charge of everything, of everything in the operation. You just go and encrypt somebody. You uh, have on your builder, most of the time you have all the options to set up the ransom node, the payment address, even the icon and the extension that you want uh, to encrypt the, uh, the files on. Now we have Chimera, another commodity ransomware. As you can see, again, we have a more developed ransom node asking for crypto, not for both of phone cards. Again, super easy encryption, super common to, be, to use. Again, the infection chain is super simple. It, sends, it can be sent via phishing emails on a macro. It will download a X file that will uh, ingest two libraries and then execute the encryption. It was believed to be the first one to threaten people to leak their files online, double extortion method. It is believed to be the first one. And it's the first one to use BitMessage as a situ server. And when it started uh, offering an affiliate program, the share was 50-50, which is not commonly seen today. It's most around 70-30. As you can see, this is the infection chain. Only one of the files contains the encryption mechanisms, which is core DLO, and then the magic happens. Now back to you with Tesla. Well, Tesla, uh, he was first detected in 2015, so kind of a long time ago, you no? Know, because uh, the way he attacks is different from the other ones. There is a, the blah, 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 they generate a new treasure with a unique Bitcoin address and a private key every time they encrypt it. But the encryption scheme is based on AAS as very good encryption algorithm. And every time the more executed, uh, executed I was sorry, I'm too tired and I forgot English, uh, the word is in English. Uh, so as different uh, encryption, different key, different everything. But they don't encrypt larger files, just small ones. And they, uh, they, communi they communi communicate via public torch web service to your C2. And that, of course, was located in Tor browser. And they delete the shadow copies. But the thing is, what they encrypt 
games. You know, the young people who play games on computers like Steam, uh, peop, uh, they use a Steam account, this kind of thing. They, uh, they target not people on cybersecurity, big companies, but regular people that don't know nothing about uh, this cybersecurity. So, can you picture like 15 year old guy playing games and then what the hell is happening? You know, what is this? I don't know what, what, how to do. But it's very valuable, you know, the passwords, saved games, or pictures in their computer. So, or what else a teenage can have there, or even grow ups, or whatever. So, they pay. It's like in the back of the time, one Bitcoin is like $500, something like this. It's not that much in that time, but it's not so, it's not nothing, you know, $500 for something you don't supposed to do. But first, they, um, they use Tesla Crypt and try to uh, copy other crypts. So this is first one is the first, uh, they, they, uh, they have many, many, many versions of the same, uh, this hands on note, many, many they try, but the first crypt encryption was really weak. They have a hole in this, uh, how to decrypt the file. So of course, uh, researchers found this and told for everybody, okay, it's easy to decrypt. And then lots of people didn't pay, but the group say, oh, there's something wrong here. Let's modify this because we have to be stronger, you know, uh, improve or secure it because even threat actors have holes in their security and many, many have OPSEC fail. So for this, we can find these threat actors. Oh, so here, Tesla, uh, and then they change for the script node for HTML page, you no? Know? But they also, uh, uh, the mimic crypto wall 3.0, that was a big thing that back that time. So everybody was super scared with crypto wall and say, oh, if we pretend we are there, so it will be, people will be scared and they will pay us anyway. But just a silly thing just to, you know, to fool people. This is um, the attack chain, easy, super easy, but they use Flash and Java, of course. This is, uh, there's a lot of problems with Flash and Java. Uh, for a long time, everybody said, don't use this because, because they have many, many flaws. And they use an uh, exploit kit named Angler. Angler, I found out, is a real fish. Very, it's ugly fish, terrible fish. And this is was uh, the thing back then, you know, the very good exploit kit. And then it was uh, one of the first to use zero days. This is really important because they can use this as a very simple technique, but they could use zero days too. So wow, many, uh, lots of groups start to use this exploit kit and others, you know, but this was the main one in 2015. This, uh, this group, this threat group, uh, don't, don't, didn't last much, but they had a big, was a big chaos among the people, you know, because it was a regular files for, not for, it's nothing, just pictures that had sentiment, sentimental for, uh, for everybody or saved games or, you know, things like this. Um, this is the master key the researcher found. Say, okay, you can use this to decrypt, but only 50 people, a uh, person could decrypt this. And of course, they, uh, they lost a lot of money and then they rebrand and rebrand again and again and again to have money, of course. This one, this next uh, hand somewhere is, they act different too. Uh, as you can see, all the these handsome groups, they have very peculiar method, you know, or in this code or in the who they target. So for, for these, they are very fun to research, actually. Uh, Keylogger. Um, Keylogger just attack Kinep, only this. That's it, nothing else, just kidnap. They looking for, uh, show them what's uh, exposed to internet and, found, and try to see, oh, well, let's explore this vulnerability that back then time was zero day. So they start to explore this over and over and over. 
uh, just this HBS3, just this for now. And but what they what they did, they uh, encrypt using a uh, seven zip. I mean, it's very how. Why? This was simple, you know? They, um, they put this in the zip archive and that's it. They have the, um, the password and say, okay, uh, you pay me and of course I give you the key, but we never know what really happened. Uh, and then the um, Hansel note, they put, okay, you have to do this and that to transfer money for us. This is very important. So uh, they found the zero day, start to attack, uh, but take a little longer, you know, for NAS found this and patch or at least mitigate this. Take a l and of course, no one, you know, mitigate or patch and that. At that moment, we know how this works, you know, uh, uh, who works in companies. We know not always is easy, you know, to do something in production, patch in production. So, yes. So when you check in Shodan, that time, many uh, over to, uh, well, a lot of people, you know, was attacked. Um, and they conduct this, exposing, was worldwide, mostly here in North America and in part of Europe. But that is NAS. This is very widely used. This equip equipment, NAS and and Kinep. Um, they oh, and they search for this port four four three. This is important too. And eight 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 zero eight zero open and other instance as well. Uh, here how is they encrypt this? So we need to enter the password for the crypt. And then, okay, uh, now do you put here the, the transaction that you paid for this, and voila, it's done. This is very unique, you know, and not so handsome. Uh, what happened is they are different in many, many ways. This is my favorite for some reasons. Uh, they, they name is Las Malas, like uh, the bats, but as in, it's like female, you know, Las Malas, uh, so like the bad woman, something like this. Supposedly, uh, they come from Latin America. Supposedly, we never know. Why? Uh, they actually, they encrypt the files, they ask for Hanson, but they don't want the money for themselves. Okay, we like money, but the world is full of billionaires. They don't care about the world. The world sucks, people are starving, they are destroying the world. So they target only countries that rich countries, not Latin America or Africa uh, as a continent, nothing. You see, United States, uh, uh, Europe, Russia, and places like this. They target many, many uh, type of sectors. That's okay. Uh, but they also only attacked uh, Zimbra, the email. That's it, they export some uh, some CVEs, but in Zimbra, only in Zimbra. So their encryption is a kind of military, it's hard to decrypt as well, as you can see here. So uh, here is the, um, they explain, uh, your files have been encrypted with a, a AES military grade encryption. They explain how they do this, how you can recover, uh, how you can contact them, blah, 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 blah. The same of every ransomware group. And they they have this, they still have this, uh, the blog on Tor, on Tor browser. Uh, they, they attack last year, so uh, defaulters, that is, uh, they attack this, they encrypt many, many companies, and there's a uh, I think it's 200 companies. And then this is very specific, Compania Agricola de San Felipe, uh, Fort Hollins Collection Agents, and Harita Group. Uh, what they say here, oh, we offer a simple deal. You pay to get the decryptor and everybody is okay. So uh, don't ignore us. Uh, we want your money uh, or we'll publish this, you know, all your or files, what we, if, we leak it from then for to journalists, for your clients, for everybody. You know, they are blackmail, of course, because a handsome group. There's some, some of the um, the companies they encrypted, 
and uh, some of the files. You know, you when you go to their blog, you can see uh, like many uh, data, email, password, contacts, lots. You know, big, 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 huge files. And they have a statement. This is so cool because they have these statements. Uh, we are bad, but we can be worse. Uh, while I was researching about this, uh, I found out in Mexico there are a lot of uh, very badass women. Cool, that's super cool. And they, well, there's a lot of problems with um, killing women and things like this in Mexico. And they, uh, they always go uh, kind of riot, say, okay, uh, we want uh, respect for women, this and that. We are. We are malas, pero podemos ser peores. I mean, we are bad, but we can be worse than this. So maybe they can come from Latin America. So there is a lot of activists in Latin America. I know personally some, not from Las Malas, but personally I know some activists from Latin America, from Brazil and other countries, but okay. And in this, in this statement, they say uh, a guy, I don't remember the name of, uh, here from the US, oh, we are lo losing uh, war on terror. So of course they're losing the cyber war. They are hacking this. See, they, uh, they praise the hacking, but not the way to explore, uh, not just the company, because they are against, not a, this a specific company, but against what this company means. You know, some companies destroy the world, you know, uh, nature and things like this. So they are really angry about this and say, okay, join us like Anonymous. Do. Join us to, you know, let's start a new world. It's better for us. And they say, okay, so you are willing to pay for this hacker that money goes to them to be rich, but not for us? Come on. What, what the hell? Please, pay us. And uh, you can, uh, when you pay, you, uh, you want to give this money for uh, some, uh, some organizations now, mostly in Africa, because it's a very poor country. Um, they, for this, they don't attack uh, Latin America and uh, Africa or the other colonized countries. You know? So they want to target rich countries because have money and destroy more the world. And so this is unfair. They think it's unfair. Of course it's unfair because lots of people are starving and dying and the climate change, blah, blah, blah. We know this and that sucks. So for this they do, uh, they hack. Um, they, but the companies don't pay non-profit uh, motivation cry. I mean, hacktivism, they don't want pay. So, uh, okay, fuck that. Doesn't, doesn't matter, you know? But if it's a luck beat, okay, give me your money, they will pay. They are willing to pay this. This is terrible, you know? Oh, so, so far they, uh, they had some attacks last year, not now. So let's see what's going on uh, with this, these attacks. Uh, personally, I think it's cool, but it's not so cool for companies, of course, but why they do this, like a Robin Hood, you know? Oh, wow, there are some little, not many, you know, groups that really act to do the good for the world. And they say, okay, we are still learning. We want to attack big companies because they have much more money. We are attacking these not so big ones. Once, uh, one was in Argentina. Mauro gave some uh, interviews there, you know, to talk about this ransomware, how they attack. So that's it. I like them. Don't, please don't judge me, but it's good for the world. <laughs> but it's good. Are you saying it's bad or good? Mar Marxism asks someone who died of starvation in the former Soviet Union. No, Marxism I'm not died. saying this. I don't. We talk later. We talk later about this. Better. Okay. Um, this last group, Everest, is a group that I've been tracking since, let's say, since their beginnings. They were one of the first ones to target my country, Argentina, and they did it in a very specific and interesting way. I have a, a good history of covering their deeds, uh, and actually it's pretty fun to see their transformation from their beginning to where they are now. It's actually pretty interesting. I think it's one of the most interesting evolutions I've seen in ransomware, because 
When you talk about ransomware evolution, you think of a group becoming larger, becoming, you know, more sophisticated, more builders, more targets uh, for your bills. We now include these hypervisor, we now include these operating systems, we now cover industrial systems, but not Everest. Everest actually started with a ransomware that was more like a commodity ransomware. You see people being encrypted with files having .everest extension, and then I even had clients of mine telling me, I think my antivirus sucks. And that's why, like, why? I have this ransomware here that encrypts me with this extension, like, I don't know, one, two, three, but then it says it's Everest ransomware, and it's not Everest. And then something rang a bell on my head, and I say, maybe Everest was a commodity one. Or maybe they were just selling their source code, renting a builder, or whatever. I seem some pretty weird things happening on the Everest side. Um, the infection chain was super variable, actually. You have different uh, things that were like third-party sourced or outsourced like MSF Venom payloads, Cobalt Strike beacons being used as command and control servers, which is not so common on well-established ransomware groups. And then over the time, you will see them using third-party applications, even super widely known port scanners. And that was pretty weird for a ransomware group. You either have your own tools or live off the land, you know, using whatever the host has. But using specifically open source or third party tools was not, you know, your daily bread. Um, now, after some time, Everest started threatening companies that they were going to sell their access to other groups acting as an IAB. If you have never heard this before, Everest was one of the, is now one of the best established AIBs. This means initial access broker. Somebody that sells you your access to a company. I say, I want to access a Latin American vintage. They might have an access for you, remote desktop protocol, VPN access, whatever you want. An admin portal that was forgotten, open to the public, and they have a login, they were able to sell it to you. A cookie, whatever you want. You want to set a foot in, they can sell that to you. And that transition was so smooth, was so uh, public at the time, that it was incredible. It was the only group that I've seen going back from ransomware to data extortion and initial access uh, broker. And most of the people think this may be a downgrade. It's, it's like you stop it doing ransomware and selling things. But actually, it somehow works for them. For example, um, they slowly started offering, at first, Argentinian data. And say, if you don't pay, we'll leak up. But the Argentinians say, we were not attacked then how can you not notice a ransomware attack? You are either lying or the threat actor is lying. But if you read between the lines, nobody mentioned ransomware. Nobody mentioned encryption at all. They just lay low, stole the data, stole as much as they could and say, okay, it's now time to monetize this. Let's cash out, guys. They went, cashed it out. But people at the Argentinian government, the victims say, we were not attacked. Or at least we haven't noticed an attack. And then, over the time, they switched to this. This is a post on the blog. This is a great opportunity to monetize your corporate access. Sell it to me, I will resell it for a higher price, and I will give you a cut, a share. And then, this is what I was talking about just a minute ago. They just, uh, I will translate you the, the, the things that are in Spanish, don't worry. This is the Argentinian Ministry of Economy. And then, the INTA, which is the National Institute of Agrotech, agricultural tech, and then the Argentinian government, 200K dollars. And the Argentinians say, don't pay this. This is a scam. We haven't been attacked. This isn't something that they told me. It was told to the media. Clarín is the biggest media in Argentina. And they asked me, actually, about this case. And we were talking about this. They say, we are not aware of an attack. I spoke with Everest. And they told me, yeah, the attack is real, and we can show you. And they showed me that they had access to a Citric instance. The government responded back, that Citric instance is not public. I went back to Everest, and they told me, yeah, we know. We have the VPN to access the Citric instance. We can sell it to you as well. If you buy two of them, we'll make a cheaper price. 
So if you believe that going from ransomware to data extortion is a downgrade, these guys can truly show you otherwise. And even sometimes you have offers that you can refuse in your life. And Argentina, you know, hyperinflation, everything, Millet, you know, we have, uh, we are currently on an economic crisis. And these guys know it. So they put up Black Friday, super offers, flash sales, buy now, you have 24 hours, you can buy for half the price, super cheap, and the like. They are pretty well at marketing, pretty good at marketing, actually. And this concludes our talk. Um, before going back to the questions, uh, if you want a conclusion from my side at least, is that you, there are two things that you can avoid on life. Taxes and ransomware. Maybe you can trick death, you can cheat death, but ransomware and taxes you won't be able to get away with. So it just happens. It's not a shame if you suffer a ransomware attack. Go for the full transparency before somebody goes for the full disclosure. Speak up, say this happened to us, we just fuck it up. Um, if CrowdStrike could fuck it up, an entire world, you can with your company. It's, it's not a shame. It happens to all of us, to the best of us. I hope you enjoy your talk, and I'll leave you with my partner now. Uh, any questions, something? Oh, before we go, or, you know, how you can find us. And, as I said, there is a name of music over the slide, so if you want to see, you know, we prepared this in Apple Music and Spotify, if you like it. It's cool. It's pretty cool, you know. Lots of songs that I like, so that's it. Any questions, something, critics? My head is good. Okay. Thank you, gracias. Um, I, I, have, I want to know if you have any direct contact with the threat actors behind these uh, threats, any one of them. Maybe um, Everest, any, any one of them, if you have any direct contact with the guys behind this threat. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, part of the threat intelligence job, as far as I can see, some companies frown upon this, so it, I, I want to have full disclosure with that. Part of the threat intelligence cycle for me is talking to them. If you see them as, you know, the, the Lockheed Martin chain, kill chain, they are my enemies, they are the, the adversary, you have lost at the first seconds that you step in. You have to know that there are people, bad actors, but at the end they will speak up. I managed to interview lots of ransomware groups in the past, they are on my GitHub. I published Dark Vault, which is, uh, they are ex Lockbit affiliates. I managed to interview uh, by Society, which is actually, uh, well, it's pretty well known. Uh, when they just first started, before they started targeting universities and the like, I started speaking with them. Um, obviously, you do not uh, share or back what they do, but you know that at least you can see some point in what they do, how they do, how they act, and how to protect yourself, because they are open in telling you, we, we attack this kind of doors. And you know that if you have that kind of door, you have to be aware. Um, we also speak with data extortion groups, which are actually, they, they like to lay low than the ransomware groups. They are not so open to speak, and they will give you an insight on how they work, what they are looking after, and especially why you might be a target. That's the most important thing for your organization. For your threat profile, will I, will I be a target of these guys, and why? And talking up to them up front sometimes can give you a lot of insight, lots of things that you won't see on the media, on the newspapers, because obviously uh, they need to sell uh, headlines. Uh, thanks for the question. And, and, and based in the IAB, Initial Access Brokers, how much of them are from Latin America? It's full. Actually, a threat actor which uh, was called Curious Jackal, you might know him by Kelvin Security. Probably you have heard that name before in Venezuela. Uh, well, that was one of the very first and the most, uh, I, I don't know if advanced is the word, but the most spread ones I've seen. That guy had literally, uh, it was Disneyland for bad actors. He sold anything you wanted. I don't know how it, he managed to get everything. You want access to Finchet? He had. Access to hospital? He had. Access to government? He had. Um, 
I think he was one of the first on establishing an IAB cycle on Latin America. But then you have, for example, in Mexico, uh, threat actors that started, uh, let's say from the ground, not, 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 not in a bad way, right? Like Mexican mafia. They started from the ground and now they're selling, yeah, we are selling Quintana Roo full government dump and access. And you say, wait, the next day we sell full Tribunal de Cuentas from this full access and database and we can create an account for you. And in Argentina specifically, this is a problem because they will sell you access to uh, the jails, the jail system, you know? You can see inmates, you can see officers, you can see uh, when they uh, move an inmate from one jail to another, to police system, access to hospitals, as six. In my Twitter, I actually cover a lot of that kind of activity in Argentina and Uruguay only, but sometimes I go a little step away from to Latin America. And Mostly because, uh, for example, they explore, of course, some vulnerabilities. But remember, Latin America is a poor country, are poor countries. So it's easy to, you know, you work in this company, take this, uh, you know, to uh, to infect the servers. Oh, I give you like ten grand. That in Brazil, yeah. for who gets a minimum wage, is too much. You know, and so I give you this, so you give me access, and then they escalate. So it's super, in Brazil, I can say this from Brazil, it's super easy to do this. It's just, hey, how are you doing? That's super yeah. easy. Okay, what about TTPs? Because you know it, in, 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 in LATAM, we don't have it. Uh, we don't have TTPs about yeah. our threat actors. That's actually very true. Actually, uh, before Kelvin Security, first market was righted, the first one to have technical TTPs, detailed attack chain, victimology, and everything was CrowdStrike, which is absolutely has nothing to do in Latin America. Don't have office, doesn't have uh, big partners. Exactly. Uh, um, trying to acquire that requires sometimes uh, introducing new TTPs. For example, I will, I will give you two examples. One worldwide, one from Latin America. What Sibol said, it's something that happens a lot in Latin America. I say, okay, bribing a user to forget a VPN on a pen drive, to send it over email, to forget it in a Slack chat, send it to yourself or send it to a channel and I will grab it. You, you, you won't have a problem. And most of the time they don't have a problem actually. And that's something that we have to change. Uh, I, I don't mean to punish every uh, simple mistake, but sometimes mis these mistakes lead up to full encryption of your servers. Mm -hmm. And that TTP is something that we were pushing for. You need to, and they say, no, that's covered under insider threat. Yeah, but insider threat is super wide. You have to, that, that's the, the idea behind TTPs, to go as much specifically as possible. But it's not politically correct to say, John, from accounting, solid success. So nobody wants to, to be the finger pointing to John. And also we have another TTP uh, from North Korean state actors, which is the fake job interview. They will just set up a fake job interview with you. It's actually what I covered in the, what I say when I stole the sample. The sample got to us via fake job interview. And they send you a challenge. And they say, this challenge does not work. See why. What's the first thing you're going to do? To execute it. Exactly. On line five, you have the malware, and it will be stuck at line 10. You will fix line 10. We'll run it again. It will just be, get stuck at line 20. But aside from that, the fake interview, they say, no, that falls under social engineering. No, the hell it is. It's something fully new. They're setting up employers. They, set, they are, um, um, I, I don't know the world, uh, they are like, um, I, I don't know the, the, the exact world. Uh, they, they are trying to pose as companies, to pose as recruiters. So China. this is not simple social engineering. Impersonating, exactly, that's the word, thank you. So that's a new TTP, but you have to do a lot of work to get that TTP accepted as such. They will say, no, that falls under social engineering. No, it doesn't. It's something more different. It can fall under social engineering, but setting up a fake entire job market and then fishing for somebody, that's super APT, the super state sponsor. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your question. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Uh, just, just quick. 
just quick here. And uh, about the cold, like, uh, for example, in Latin America, they are super stupid, you know? It's a specific from bank mower. They are all the same. They uh, cope and paste. Like, oh, it's not working. Let's change one line of the banking mowers all the time. They use Delphi and they attack the same way. It's amazing. You know, some like Astaroth, they are big, huge. I, we, I think we talked about this yesterday, right? Uh, I guess they spend like a million emails every single day, DGA. So every spend is different, uh, totally different. They, every malware is different. So this TTP is very specific for Latin America. And here, uh, like Russia or Europe or United States, is completely different. If it's not working, okay, let's start again. But in Latin America, we are very resistant. You know, oh, Oh, it's not working. Let's change just a little bit and keep working and working. And this is, I think it's amazing because how is possible this works? You know, how? Because we know how it, work, it works and how they attack what they do. You know, they fix stupid things uh, overlay all the time. This is the basic of Latin America, this overlay, screen overlay. So it's beautiful. Uh, I think is, that's it, guys. She means she means that the actors are more persistent than advanced. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much.